Funding for Chasing Frames is provided by Nikon and On One Software. Blue ghosts, you know, a lot in general is not known about them. We typically will see them in this area for about three weeks, nowhere else in the world. We're gonna go into the woods and find them. Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey. I've traveled the world for the last 16 years as a professional photographer, photographing faces and documenting stories. Join me in our new series, Chasing Frames, where we learn from some incredibly inspiring people who work hard to transform lives, protect our planet, and rescue those in need. I'm out here in Pisgah National Forest, cradled within the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is interesting because we're gonna go to the cradle of forestry next to learn all about and go in search of the elusive blue ghost firefly. So a lot of your um, more common firefly species are coming out, uh, you know, right at dusk. There's still some daylight. The blue ghosts really like to come out once it's completely dark. So about a half hour after sunset is typically when uh, they will uh, start emerging and flying around. And they like undisturbed wooded coves. So you're not gonna really see blue ghost fireflies out in a, an open field. Right. You gotta go into an undisturbed wooded habitat um, and kind of peek at around night. the bushes at night. The blue ghosts don't really blink. They actually will light up and um, kind of hold that light for sometimes upwards of 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. And they will hover across the forest floor rather than that blinking we're used to seeing. Right. And that's what makes them so unique as a species. They're typically out for maybe about two hours, but you're not gonna go out a lot of times at midnight or one in the morning and see these like you would some other species. They're really just active for those first couple hours of complete darkness. So they're, they're out trying to find a successful uh, mate. The males are lighting up, floating around the forest floor. The females are responding to those with their own glowing. The males will move in, mating will take place. The fertilized eggs will be laid by the females. Mm -hmm. And then those eggs will typically be in eggs for a couple weeks. Um, they'll hatch out and they'll kind of live throughout the fall. And then about when the first frost is starting to hit, they've got a bury underneath that um, leaf litter, get kind of below the frost layer, mm -hmm. and then they kind of go into a little bit of a dormant state. And what we're seeing now are the adults emerging that were laid last year. Um, it's kind of uh, not very widespread. Um, it's kind of just found uh, in the mountains uh, in the Southern Appalachians in a few key lo locations. And it's, it's regional yeah, only. So very, very much a Southern Appalachians, Western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, maybe a little bit of eastern Tennessee. Um, but nowhere else in the world. Nowhere else in the world. What is bioluminescence and how do they get it? All right, so uh, bioluminescence, if we just break that down, two words, bio meaning life, yes. luminescence meaning light. light. So it's light from life. It's basically a chemical reaction light from a light bulb, a lot of that energy is lost in heat. Mm -hmm. So bioluminescence, uh, especially with the fireflies, is what's known as a cold light. So it's super efficient. Yeah. Um, and it has to do with a bunch of different chemicals combining together. So all living things is kind of the building blocks of DNA. Fireflies aren't the only creatures that generate light. There are mushrooms that glow in the dark. There are jellyfish that glow in the dark. There are actually many other marine creatures that have their own light. Even microorganisms like bacteria can glow in the dark. Imagine that instead of switching on a lamp when it gets dark, you could read by the light of a glowing plant on your desk. A team of engineers at MIT is currently creating plants that can give off a soft light for several hours at a time. But they believe that this process can create plants that will one day be bright enough to light up an entire workspace. And researchers are saying that this technology could even one day transform entire trees into self-powered street lights. Imagine that, driving at night with glowing trees guiding your way. It would be an otherworldly experience, or rather this world's experience in the not so distant future. Okay, we're gonna go into the woods now and find them. Oh wow, look, 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 look. Wait, there's too much light. We can't see what's going on. Let's pause. Let's okay, pause. pause. Let's pause. Let's put this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We were surprised at just how difficult it was to capture these fast-moving creatures in pitch black. So we turned to a local photographer who spent the last few years mastering these techniques. Um, it's, it's a really interesting sort of mystical, natural experience. Um, unlike anything you might have experienced uh, before, even if you've seen, you know, the, you know, the fireflies up in the trees uh, as a child, you remember that. Um, and I think it does evoke some, some of our childhood, you know, back to us to go out as adults and see fireflies. Humans can visually see the fireflies. The camera can't quite pick them up to that depth, um, <clears throat> but you can see them. When we first walked out here, it was pitch black, and we're on our own. It's just our small little video group here, and um, we have these red flashlights that are um, that don't interfere with the blue flashing, but also let us illuminate the scene somewhat, but not in this really jarring off way that floods the whole area. That said, every time we turn them on, it felt like we couldn't get our shot back because just the smallest amount of light kind of wrecked the shot. Yeah, we're just kind of fumbling around, trying really hard to stay in the path because you take one foot off the path and you might crush all these ladies in waiting. <laughs> we're like hanging out, waiting for the fellas who are flashing in. And that would be just a terrible way to end a love story. So we're trying to stay contained, um, fumble in the dark, and do our best, not unlike the fireflies right now. Thanks so much for joining us out here today in our search for blue ghosts. If you'd like to learn more about what we found out here today, what you can do to help in terms of conservation, deep dive photography tips and techniques, and what you can do after the shot, check us out on our website. Thank you.